It's September the 10th, 1952, and a pair of F4U4B Corsairs make their way across the clear North Korean skies. On board the lead plane is Captain Jesse Fulmar of the Marine Fighter Attack Squadron Number 312, also known as the Checkerboards. Him and his wingman, First Lieutenant Willie Daniels, are on a bombing mission with the old World War II fighters, their usual role since the dawn of the jet age. Fulmar scans the shores as the pair flies straight into the mouth of the Taidong River. He's carrying over 2,000 pounds of bombs and rockets, and he's looking for targets. There's been a reported enemy movement on the south shores of the river mouth. However, Fulmar can't see anything out of the ordinary. You see them? That's a negative, Checker 9. Without a target, Fulmar orders to patrol the estuary just in case the enemy show themselves. Little does he know, up high and in the distance there are two MiG-15s that have noticed the pair of blue aircraft. Fulmar and Daniels fly back towards the sea, taking a look at the riverbanks and the coastal city of Chinampo. They reach the coast and turn back around for another observation run through the estuary. But as he turns, Captain Fulmar spots the glimmering form of two enemy MiG-15 preparing to dive upon them. Bandits! The Corsairs immediately release all of their payload upon the uttering of the word. The thousands of pounds of bombs and external fuel tanks fall away to the sea, and the pilots feel the aircraft come alive. Fulmar slams the throttle to full and tightens his turn towards the MiGs, racing to pass underneath them. Up above, the MiGs dive straight down towards them, barreling for their prey with the blazing speed of modern fighter jets. But the Corsair is closing in too much, and the dive angle is becoming far too steep. Fulmar watches as the MiGs level out of their dive and roar past overhead. He catches his breath. His maneuver had worked, but it's only gained him some time. He orders Daniels into a defensive weave as he looks back over his shoulder, desperately searching for the enemy jets. But instead, he sees something much worse. There's two more MiG-15s approaching, in from his left. His heart races. The already stacked deck suddenly is becoming all but unwinnable. The two proud Marines aren't going to back down easily, though. He can only hope the old fighter bomber underneath him can stay the course. Full of determination, he turns his Corsair hard towards the two incoming enemies, hoping to meet their assault head on. But they're closing in too fast. Mid-turn, the pair of MiGs unleash their cannons upon the Corsairs. Their 23mm shells streaking past right in front of Fulmar's windshield. But miraculously, they miss. Realizing that his opponents are about to overshoot, Fulmar turns his aircraft back towards the right as the MiGs race past at blistering speed. The enemy gives him their backs, and he quickly brings his sights onto the closest MiG. Fulmar pulls the trigger and unleashes a barrage from his quad 20mm cannons. The shells fly across the Korean sky, guided by Fulmar's impeccable aim. They explode into the rear of the jet and tear right through its fuselage. Fulmar can see the flashes of the impact. It's a hit and the MiG starts to pour a grey trail of fuel. It banks away from Fulmar's sights and speeds off for a couple of seconds before the grey trail turns a deep black. The Marine watches as the pilot loses control of the burning machine and ejects over the North Korean fields. Now pumping with adrenaline, the pair resume their defensive weave with three MiGs still circling around them. But they don't make any move. Fulmar wonders why until he spots four more jets in the distance coming to join the fray. Dread grips him. If the situation was near unwinnable before, now it's absolutely impossible. In a last ditch attempt, he orders to dive and flee for the sea. The two Corsairs race away as fast as they can. The Yellow Sea is so frustratingly close, but the bandits are coming in fast. The two aviators can feel it. They aren't going to make it. The lead MiG is coming right in on their tail with its sights square on Fulmar. Daniels sees it coming and slows his Corsair to let the enemy overshoot. 
the MiG flies past him and Daniels tries to bring his sights onto its fuselage. But the bandit knows the Marine's intentions and pulls away from the attack run, barely escaping his crosshairs. With Daniels focused on the first MiG, the second bandit in line finds itself with a clear line of sight to Fulmar's straight-flying Corsair, and it pulls the trigger. Fulmar sees the traces of 23mm fire streaking past his canopy, but has no time to react before an explosion rocks his airframe. The aircraft shakes violently and pulls hard to the left. He fights it hard as his assailant flies past. Fulmar wants to shoot back, but the Corsair is critically wounded, still pulling left, despite holding the stick full right. He turns his eyes towards his wing, and he sees the entire left aileron is missing. A section of wing near the root is completely torn open, and four feet has been shaven off the wingtip. He can tell he won't land this bird. Thinking quickly, he takes his radio and broadcasts a distress signal along with his position as a third MiG opens fire and its tracers fly past. Finishing the transmission, he hurriedly opens his canopy and jumps out of the stricken aircraft. The wind crashes into him like a wall, sending him tumbling through the air. Fulmer gathers his senses and opens his chute just as the ear-piercing roar of a jet engine sounds right past him. Mix swarming his pilotless Corsair. Meanwhile, Daniels seizes the distraction of his flight leader's troubled plane and bolts out to sea, diving for speed and escaping as fast as he can. His chasers have instructions not to venture towards the waters or separate from their comrades. So with many focusing on the crippled Corsair, the planes chasing Daniels let him go and he manages to escape. Fulmar watches his plane get torn apart by MiG fire and fall like a rock into the ground, slamming into the sea in a monumental splash. The bandits disperse almost immediately afterwards. By the time Fulmar falls into the rolling waves below, the shore has already largely fallen back to its natural silence. Thankfully, the rescue wouldn't take long. Allied forces heard his transmission and an Albatross seaplane was dispatched to his location. He would be picked up from the water not 10 minutes later without a scratch. Jesse Fulmar would be awarded the Silver Star for his actions that day and would earn the distinction of being the first Marine Corps pilot to shoot down a MiG-15. He would survive the war and return home with his Silver Star and a Purple Heart. He passed away in 2004, aged 83. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and please watch more videos of ours. Thank you.